Now, from Nebraska's trusted news source, this is Channel 8 News at 5. Right up tonight on the news, Lincoln Public Schools introducing a new program to combat teen vaping. Plus, fallen Lincoln police officer Mario Herrera was honored at a special ceremony in Washington, D.C. But first tonight, a nice story. A Bennett Elementary School student got the ride of his dreams to school today. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. A fourth grader at Bennett went to school, you could say, in style this morning. Eight-year-old Caden Adamic says this is his dream ride. Channel 8's Joseph Nasser rode along with Caden to show you how he rolled into Bennett Elementary today. I filled out a form and I won the fire truck ride and I'm pretty excited about it. Caden Adamic was grinning ear to ear as he rode fire truck number 30 to school on Friday morning. According to his father Ryan, Caden has long been a fire truck enthusiast. He does have several fire trucks even still around the house and even fire truck Lego sets and about about anything you could think of fire truck we got around the house. Caden earned the special opportunity after submitting a fire safety questionnaire to Bennett Fire Station. They asked like how much air still you need to replace your smoke alarms. The answer every 10 years. Another example of a question students were asked is what the number one cause of house fires is. A cooking fire. Fire prevention is a real big deal for us in Bennett and we do a program every year at the school so that the kids are prepared in case they ever had an emergency. And they all know if they do this, they got a chance to ride to the fire truck. Bennett Fire Chief Tim Norris says it's a good reminder for kids and their families on things they can do to prevent fires in the home. We emphasize a lot of things with cooking safety. Stay three feet away, turn the handle in on a pan. You know, and the best way to put a fire on the stove is put the lid on it, remove the oxygen. Caden says firefighters like his uncle are heroes to him. One reason why he was so excited to ride the truck to school today. This is way better than driving the bus to school. He's always wished that he could be one of those kids that get off that fire truck and all of his friends cheer for him when they get off the truck. And I'm just, it's just great to see him so excited and so happy about something. And Bennett, Yosef Nasser, Channel 8 News. Hmm. Oh, what an experience for Caden. Good job, my friend. Uh, you could tell he's having the time of his life. I love feel good story stories like that on a Friday. You're darn right. Uh, every year, the fire department there has a different theme for students. This year, the theme is the sound of fire safety. If you hear the beep, stand on your feet and get out. In other news now, nationwide teen vaping plummeted last school year as many students spent more time at home. But that's not the case here in Lincoln. Uh, Channel 8's Ariana Martinez joins us live here in the studio to explain a new program Lincoln Public Schools is using to keep students from vaping. Ariana? Yes, in this school year alone, there have been 139 vaping violations throughout Lincoln Public Schools. As the number of violations continues to rise year after year, LPS wants to tackle the fact that many students may actually have a nicotine addiction. What you hope happens is that students make the decision that uh, they're not going to use something that's harmful to their bodies. This online intervention program requires students to take a seven course education class online while at school. And tonight on the news at six, I'll tell you what signs parents should be aware of to know if your child is vaping, as well as what resources there are to curb the addiction. Ariana Martinez, thank you very much. Looking forward to the rest of that story. Let's head on over to the Weather Center now with Chief Meteorologist John Dissauer. Uh, John, shaping up to be a pretty nice Friday. Kind of cool and windy, though. Yeah, feeling a little more fall-like, late October-like around the area for sure. We've had some winds gusting at times over 30 miles per hour. We're also watching just a couple of very light showers trying to develop in some spots. You can see the satellite imagery. We've had some sunshine through the afternoon, but as we started to cook the atmosphere just a little bit, we've had just enough instability to pop some of these clouds back up, which we would mention yesterday would be the case. But underneath some of these clouds, we do have just a couple of very light showers that are trying to move off to from northwest to southeast. So right now we've got just a couple of very light showers on the north side of Lincoln as well as the northeast side of Lincoln passing through. And what's interesting is our dew points are sitting in the 20s to right around 30 degrees. So we've got some dry air in place. So some of these showers may not be making it all the way down to the ground. So you may see some of that uh, verga falling from the sky or where, where you can see the water droplets evaporating uh, as it's falling through the atmosphere. Winds, as I mentioned, still gusting 32 miles per hour 
Moore in Lincoln as of this hour. It's 23 mile per hour gusts in Hebron as well as in Beatrice and 24 mile per hour gusts in Aurora. Temperatures right now sitting anywhere from the upper or make it the mid 50s to 60 degrees in Beatrice, 61 degrees right now in Hebron. For the rest of this evening, we'll see skies clearing out once the sun sets right around 640 or so this evening. And then temperatures start to drop down to 53 degrees by 8, 48 degrees by 10. We've got a cold morning coming tomorrow morning. And if you're heading out to football games, we'll take a closer look at what you can expect out of the football fields in my Storm Alert Team forecast. All right, thank you very much, John. We may have missed out on the flu last year, but it's, of course, back again for 2021. As mask mandates drop around the country, the flu could actually be a bigger problem this year. Some of our immunity officials say may have been lost over the uneventful season last year. However, many of the ways we've been fighting COVID can help get you through the flu season. Masks actually work really well to prevent influenza. Social distancing works well. So some of the things that we're doing for um, to prevent COVID transmission are even more effective at preventing influenza transmission. So just remember to practice good hygiene like we've been lately and don't be afraid to check in with your doctor or just stay home if you feel sick. Today is the start of the annual enrollment period for Medicare and millions of Americans who are on Medicare have the option to switch their plans. It can be confusing to choose from thousands of options. Well, I talked to an expert who offers some advice. When are the ideal times of the year to change or improve your, your Medicare coverage? It's right now. Now is the annual enrollment period. It starts today and it goes until December 7th. So you have 53 days in which you have maximum flexibility to choose or confirm your coverage for 2022. So Ari, what are the ideal times of year to change or improve your Medicare coverage? Right now is the ideal time. This is the annual enrollment period. It goes from today to December 7th. So 53 days in which to optimize your coverage for 2022. Well, let's talk about some of the do's and don'ts of the annual enrollment, uh, the best practices, what to watch out for. Sure, sure. It's most important to start with the providers that you want to see for next year, to go doctor by doctor to make sure that each one of them is in network with the plan of your choosing or that they accept original Medicare. And that's something that me and my team would be happy to help you with. The second thing is the prescriptions that you take, including dosage and frequency, and what pharmacy you prefer to go to. And then finally, there are additional considerations like what types of benefits are important to you, vision, dental, hearing, these are things that original Medicare doesn't cover. And a person needs to consider, you know, am I going to improve my coverage? Is it time to change? So there's some homework that needs to go into that, some time spent on uh, researching. That's right. We at Chapter start with a worksheet. The worksheet includes the doctors you want to see, the prescriptions you take, and the benefits that are important to you. It really sparks a conversation about finding the best fitting coverage for 2022. And this is at no cost to the person, right? There is no charge. It is at no cost to you. I have read reviews on you guys, and they are extremely positive. People said you really, really helped them out. Uh, Ari, biggest mistake people make during open enrollment? Biggest mistake is just to remain on your plan, thinking that it'll be the same exact plan for next year. It might have the same plan name, but that doesn't mean that the coverage will operate as you anticipate. These plans are changing every single year. And so that's why it's important to reconfirm your coverage. And right now is the time in which you have maximum flexibility to do so. And you, you folks there at Chapter, you look at all of the possibilities that might help this person, person X, person Y, person Z, and you give them the best advice on how it's gonna help them individually, correct? That's right. The Chapter team searches across every single plan that is available to you, whether it's Medicare Supplement, which is also known as Medigap, Medicare Advantage, or standalone prescription drug plan. And so for more information, it's askchapter, A-S-K, chapter.org, askchapter.org, correct? Askchapter.org. Uh, Ari Parker, uh, once again, the head Medicare advisor and co-founder of Chapter. Hopefully this will help out some of our uh, viewers. Appreciate you taking time. Thank you so much for having me, Rod. And we put this story on KOKNTV.com. On there, you will not hear the first question asked twice like you did there. That was a technical error. Uh, yeah, just in case you know someone who wants to learn more about getting help, go to our website.
Uh, some sad news to report involving a member of Nebraska football's coaching staff. That's right. The father of defensive coordinator Eric Chenander was killed in a car crash yesterday afternoon. According to the Iowa State Patrol, Gene Chenander crashed into a parked semi-trailer near Allison, Iowa around 2.30. Unfortunately, he died on the scene. No word yet if Coach Eric Chenander will make the trip to Minnesota with the Huskers for their game tomorrow. Also a somber moment yesterday in Washington, D.C. That's right. Former Lincoln Police Officer Mario Herrera honored during a special ceremony. From the state of Nebraska, Randy Zore Haddix, El Mario Herrera this was part of the National Law Enforcement Memorial Service in the Capitol. Every officer killed in the line of duty across the country over the last two years was named. As many of you know, Herrera died one year ago here in Lincoln after being shot while serving a warrant. Now we go to Florida, where the Parkland school shooting suspect was in court. Nicholas Cruz is accused of attacking a jail guard while being held on murder charges from the 2018 shooting. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. How do you wish to plead? I plead guilty. Nicholas Cruz accused of killing 17 people and injuring 17 others at a Parkland, Florida high school in 2018, facing a judge Friday, pleading guilty to charges related to an attack of a jail guard that same year. Do you understand each of the charges as well as the maximum uh, possible penalty that can be imposed on each charge? Yes. Cruz is expected to also plead guilty next week to 17 counts of murder and another 17 counts of attempted murder. Prosecutors have indicated that no matter what, the death penalty will still be on the table. Officials say Cruz returned to Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School over a year after being expelled, armed with an AR-15 rifle, gunning down 14 students and three staff members. White male, burgundy shirt, wearing a black hat and either long black pants or shorts, he mixed in with a group of students that were running westbound. The rampage over in a matter of minutes. I'm so hurt to know that a lot of people I know are gone. Cruz was found and arrested about an hour and a half later, telling police he heard voices that told him to plan the attack. Friday, he was asked by the judge about his mental state. All right, and how are you feeling today? Feeling all right. And uh, you're thinking clearly? Yes, ma'am. Jury selection for the sentencing phase is set to begin in November. Those jurors will decide if Cruz will receive the death penalty or 17 life sentences, which is what the defense is asking for. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And still ahead on the news tonight, President Biden trying to make changes to help ease the supply chain issues. That's story and more after the break.
know. Your Storm Alert Team forecast with Chief Meteorologist John DeSauer. Taking a live look right now from Allo, looking off to the west southwest from 21st Street and L Street in Lincoln. And you can see some dark clouds out there, and some of these clouds are trying to drop some precipitation. However, we've got dew points sitting in the upper 20s to low 30s, so some dry air at the surface. Take you to a different view. This is from our Honda of Lincoln camera looking back to the north northeast, and you can see some of that moisture coming through but a lot of this is not reaching the ground. Yeah, there could be a couple of raindrops falling on some windshields out there, but a lot of this is evaporating before reaching the ground, which you'll see on radar. It looks like we've got some showers passing through. So again, not all of it uh, is actually arriving at the surface. Now, satellite imagery shows you as the heating of the day is going on, we've picked up some cumulus clouds during the afternoon, and some of these have contained some light moisture with them. Uh, you can see that right now on radar. These are all moving off to the south and east, but we'll zoom in a little bit closer and show you how radar is trying to depict that there is some light rain on, through the center of town and on the southeast side of town, but again, as we just saw from our cameras, it's one of the reasons why we like having the cameras across the city to show you what's actually going on versus just showing you what's going on 2,000 feet above the ground uh, where radar is scanning. But it's still maybe a chance for a raindrop on the southeast side of town. Temperature right now is 57 degrees in Lincoln. It's 60 right now in Beatrice. Uh, temperatures did make it up into the 60s today in Lincoln, but now as these clouds are moving in, we're getting some little shots of some cooler air coming out of the northwest. Uh, that's cooling our temperatures down slightly. It's 55 degrees right now in Central City. Now you can see what I was talking about for the winds gusting as these little showers are trying to move towards Lincoln just before the hour or the top of the hour. We saw the winds begin to pick up, so we've got some gusts to 32 miles per hour out at the airport. Once the sun sets this evening, those winds will go away, and so will any chances for any showers. In fact, by 7 o'clock, we should see skies turning clear for our game of the week of Pius versus Norris this evening. Uh, clear skies 7, 8, and 9. Temperatures will be dropping for football games. 50 degrees by 8 o'clock, down into the 40s by 9, likely needing some jackets. If you're going to football games tonight, because it's going to be chilly out there, especially with a little bit of a wind, uh, but especially by the second half of the game and by the time you're heading home from the games, it's going to be cold outside. Temperatures tonight will start to drop as well by 4 a.m., getting down to right around 40 degrees. I think we'll see our temperatures dropping in the lower to middle 30s tomorrow morning. I think we're likely to see a widespread frost through southeast Nebraska. Now, Stormcast is showing you tomorrow morning we're going to start out with some sunshine around the area, and that's going to allow the temperatures to try to quickly warm back up. It's going to be a cold morning by so, so don't, don't forget that. But by noon, we're talking temperatures middle 50s to right around 60 degrees. As we head towards the afternoon, our temperatures are going to keep going back up. I think we're talking high temperatures tomorrow from the middle to upper 60s with 100% sunshine through the day tomorrow. So 67 in Lincoln, 67 in Seward, and 66 degrees for a high temperature in Beatrice. Now, I want to take you up to the north, up towards Minneapolis. For those of you paying attention to the uh, Nebraska football game for tomorrow, they'll have some clouds around tonight, maybe a light shower. Temperatures there dropping down into the 30s in Minneapolis, but game time tomorrow, we're looking for temperatures to be right around 50 degrees, and there won't be any any clouds at all outside. So it's going to be a nice sunny day for the Huskers tomorrow up in Minnesota. 57 degrees by 1 o'clock, 59 degrees by 3 o'clock. So a nice October fall day for sure. Around here on Sunday, we're going to start with temperatures back into the 30s once again. By afternoon, we'll get back up into the 70s. So some much warmer temperatures by the second half of the weekend. 76 degrees by Monday. Next week, we'll see some breezy conditions on Tuesday. Another front passes, maybe bringing a shower north of Lincoln on Wednesday. And then we'll see temperatures holding up in the 60s as we head towards the end of next work week. Looking like a beautiful fall forecast. All right, thank you, John. In national news now, President Biden announcing new moves to ease the crisis in delivery and supply of goods coming into ports on the West Coast. But some small businesses say it's too late. Camilla Barnell spoke to distributors who say they're still anticipating a shortage and a price increase for the holidays. This wholesale retail store distributes toys all over the country. I, I'm scared. But the merchandise comes from China. And with delays at the Long Beach and Los Angeles ports, they're either stuck on shipping containers along the coast or coming at dramatically increased prices. Like every day I'm crossing my fingers that hoping that our containers gets here. Ports in Southern California now operating around the clock. The most popular product right now are all the pop fidget toys. But for distributor Claire Liu, this Christmas, the damage is done. We just have to hope and pray and that products are getting through. These small businesses prepare for the holidays months in advance, but goods are already limited and prices are already high. Moving goods from the factory to the customer. 
Some numbers that I've seen, the early indications suggest it has gone up on average about 56%. At La Fiesta Party Supply in downtown Los Angeles, the owners worry about their holiday supply. A year ago, we, we, we were bringing products for Christmas, but because the delays and logistics, we got the product for Christmas, we got it on, on January. They expect a similar situation this year. Plus, the added cost. I had to pay rent, I had to pay employees, and if I don't increase the price, then it, it wouldn't be a business. Both of these small businesses say in the end, they suffer, as do retail stores Americans rely on every day. And their customers pay the price. Look at it in a different perspective. It's everyone's concern. It's everyone's problem. In Los Angeles, I'm Camila Bernal. Day on Wall Street, the Dow gaining 382 points. NASDAQ is up 74. Here are your numbers. You're watching Channel 8, Nebraska's trusted news source. Finally tonight, a kid wins a national hair competition with a very generous mullet. Then with his winnings, he showed just how generous he can be. Jeremy Roth has a look at tonight's Take a Look at This. What this Arkansas boy did after winning a national best mullet competition proves he doesn't just have a spectacular head of hair, but a heart of gold to match. 11-year-old Alan Baltz has been growing his prodigious plumage since the beginning of the pandemic. So when he found out there was a cash prize, he decided to enter the USA Mullet Championship. But it's not what you think. 
after winning the kids' division, Allen was less party in the back and more business in the front. He decided to donate all $2,500 of his winnings to local foster care organizations. Well, I know how it feels to be in foster care, so I just thought maybe it would be sweet to do it. And just like his impressive hair, his community is behind him. Allen's generosity has inspired more than $3,000 in donations to two separate foster care organizations. So what's next for Allen? A haircut, maybe? Nobody's gonna touch that. Speaking of hair-raising stories, after spotting a snake going under their house, a California homeowner called in a local expert for help. But what he found under there was shocking. Total of 92 rattlesnakes underneath her house. You heard that right. He removed 92 rattlesnakes. The handler says this veritable viper pit was likely caused by drought conditions. And not only was he not rattled by the find, he was downright giddy. I was tickled pink. I wish that happened every day to me. Give me a 300. I mean, as long as I got enough containers to put them in and come back enough, I'll do it all day long. Ugh. For take a look. With the Channel 8 Eyewitness News mobile app, you'll be the first to know. Get alerts about breaking news and weather, all in the palm of your hand. Stop by Comfort Made Mattress Factory today and save up to $500 with our bigger bed, smaller... Close.